In the ladder safety video that we did a few years ago, I made one mistake, neglected a couple of important things, and have learned quite a bit in the comments about one of the choices I made, which is actually something of a controversy. The mistake that I made was in demonstrating shimming up one side of an extension ladder instead of digging down one side of an extension ladder. And as soon as I read it, I thought, yeah, it's not near as sketchy to dig one side down if it's high compared to shimming one side up if it's low. Now they make devices that attach to your ladder that will extend the legs in order to get even footing without either digging or shimming. But if you have to make a choice between shimming up one leg of a ladder in order to make it stand up straight or digging it down, it's always better and can I just point out that the form setter is the right tool to dig down one side or possibly even two sides as a way to be just darn sure that the ladder is not going to kick out. I should have shown that last time and I didn't. Thanks for your comments. There's another move with an extension ladder that will help against that will help guard against kicking out, and that is the way that you orient the feet. See that? These feet, which will get you full bearing on a nice flat surface, will also roll over and put just a little bit of tooth at the bottom that will dig in on dirt instead of sliding out. Should have made that clearer. So because ladders are the most dangerous tool on any construction job site, there are plenty of opinions and, in fact, training protocols about how to use ladders safely. It was fascinating to me that a little controversy erupted in the comments about whether or not when you climb a ladder, an extension ladder, you should hang on to the rungs so that if you slip, you have a better chance of holding your weight, or, as I usually do, the rails or the strings so that there's never a moment that your hands are not both involved with holding you on the ladder. Now, one of the answers to that question for me is, often working by myself, I carry items up a ladder. I'll have a bucket or a board or a skill saw, and I'm holding it and climbing the ladder. I'm told OSHA does not allow that. I'm told that that's a safety violation, and I believe it. But if I am climbing a ladder, carrying something, I don't want to be moving my good hand in order to hang on to a rung. And so, letting my hand slide on the string or rail is, in my opinion, safer. But you have to find out what the policy is on your job site before you decide whether you're a rung holder or a string holder. And then, you know, use your brain and take your chances. Another thing that I left out of that video, and Nate and I talked about it and decided we would follow up in this video, is the critical importance of how you get off of a ladder and onto a roof. I mean, that's the, <laughs> that's the critical moment, and it's scary. The first thing is you make sure you've got at least three feet of the ladder sticking up above the edge of the platform that you want to get off on, like this. One, two, three. Let's see if that's about right. One, two, three. Yeah, we've got about three feet from the edge of the roof to the top of those strings. It makes it possible and safe. So this is about as dangerous a transitional space as you're ever gonna find yourself in. It's transitioning from the ladder, which is at the right angle. You know, it, the ladder is safe. But getting off onto that roof does not feel safe. It's all about controlling your center of gravity and having something to keep a hold of as you do that. You come up to the top and you step on the last rung that is still below the point of contact with the roof. You don't step up here ever. Because as soon as you step there, you begin to try to lever your ladder off the ground, which is to be avoided. At this point, you get a hold of the top and you shift your center of gravity right over the center of the ladder and put a foot on the roof and then shift your weight from the center of gravity over the ladder 
to the center of gravity over the roof and get away from the edge of the roof. There's really nothing to it, regardless of what your instinct for survival is telling you. Now the dismount is the same thing, but more of it. You come up to the edge of the roof and you're paying attention. Okay, you're not on your phone. You're not yelling at somebody across the job site. You're paying attention. And as soon as you get a hold of the ladder, you begin to push down on it. You begin to look for the time and the way to put your, your weight and your center of gravity over the ladder, which is right now. See that? You do not want to be shifting the ladder like this. It is down. With a hold of the ladder and the center of gravity still split, you just shift your weight out to that top rung that you know is going to hold you because it held you 30 seconds ago. Now going down the ladder, the choice whether or not to hold on to the strings or the rungs becomes clear if you're not carrying something. And it's this, you're more likely to miss a step backing down the ladder than climbing. And so I hold on to the rungs usually when I'm going downhill. Last item in dismounting a ladder. As you're coming down and you transition from two rungs underfoot to one, you see that? There's not as much under your foot there as there was here. So pay attention when you get to the bottom of the second section of ladder and get your foot all the way in to where you have bearing. Okay, two more things to wrap this up. And the first of those two things is the most important. I already pointed out that this is the most dangerous tool on a job site. It's about the most dangerous activity you're going to engage with anywhere. And so if there's ever a time when you should be paying close attention to that still, small voice that's telling you to slow down and be careful, it's any time you touch or deal with a ladder. The last thing I want to point out is how in the world do you carry these? Or at least, how do you carry them when you have to leave them in a vertical position? The first thing is you let it down as far as you can. The second thing is you put your hands about as far apart as you comfortably can when you grab a hold of it. And you lift it up and you brace the top hand against your forehead. So having said all that, if you decide to use an extension ladder, you better pay attention. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.